In this video we're going to go over genetic drift and genetic drift can be kind of complicated at first but hopefully this video will help explain what genetic drift is and how it could result in evolution. Before we can get into genetic drift we do have to define what evolution is and the definition that we use is that evolution is a change in allele frequency over generations. Okay, so then what is genetic drift? Well, genetic drift is any random change in allele frequency over generations. So genetic drift is different than other forms of evolution, such as natural selection, because we, don't, we can't predict the change that's going to happen. Unlike natural selection, where you can predict which alleles are most likely going to increase in frequency in the population. Okay, let's use a simple example to understand genetic drift. So let's say we have an island full of cows, and we're going to focus on one gene of the cow. So we're going to look at cow color. And in this population, let's say there's two alleles for cow color. There's the dominant allele, big B, which is going to cause a blue cow, and a recessive allele, little b, which is going to cause a white cow. Now remember, evolution is a change in allelic frequency over generations. So first we have to figure out what the allelic frequency of Big B is in, on this island. So to do that, all you need to do is count up how many Big B alleles there are, and then divide it by the number of alleles total that there are for this gene. So we represent the dominant allele frequency with the letter P, and since there are nine dominant alleles in this population, out of 20 alleles total, that means the allelic frequency for the dominant allele is 0.45, or 45%. Okay, let's say on this island there is a volcano, and this volcano erupts. Now this is going to be a random natural disaster. So as this volcano erupts, lava is going to spew everywhere, and then it's going to hit some of the cows, and those cows will die. Okay, so we already calculated the allele frequency of the population before this natural disaster occurred. So now let's calculate what it is after the disaster. So again, we represent the dominant allele with P. There are three dominant alleles left in this population out of 12 alleles total, which means there is an allelic frequency of the dominant allele of 0.25, or 25%. Okay, so how is this different than natural selection? Well, it's because it didn't matter if you were a blue cow or a white cow. That did not influence whether you survived the natural disaster or not. The only thing that matters was how close were you to the volcano when it erupted. So the color of the cow did not influence which cow was closest to the volcano when it, it went off. So this is a random change in the population. Alright, let's see what happens if we increase the size of the population. So I have over here the previous example of the smaller island, or the island with the smaller population. And if you remember, the f beginning dominant allelic frequency was 0.45, while after the eruption, the allelic frequency was 0.25. So there was about a 0.20 difference between the allele frequencies of before and after this natural disaster occurred. Now looking at the big island, again we need to calculate the dominant allele frequency. Alright, so what P is on this island, since there is 14 dominant alleles in this population out of 30 alleles total, means that we have an allelic frequency for the dominant allele of 0.47. Again, we're going to have an eruption, and lava is going to fling everywhere. And let's say, just like the last island, four cows die. Alright, so to compare the allelic frequency of before and after, we calculate the allelic frequency of the dominant allele after. And since there were 8 dominant alleles left in the population, out of 22 alleles total, means the new allelic frequency is 0.36. Which is a 0.11 difference between before and after of the allelic frequency. Now compare that to the previous island of 0.2. So we have the same number of cows die. But in the larger population, the allelic frequency was less affected by this genetic drift, this random event. Now imagine what ha would happen if we had 100 cows on an island, or 1,000, or a million, and four cows died from a volcanic eruption. How much of the population is really influenced by that random event? Well, the larger the population gets, the less genetic drift can influence the allelic frequency of the population. When most people think of genetic drift, they usually think of natural disasters, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. 
random events could happen at the cellular level and happen more discreetly. All right, so let's take a different example. All right, let's say we have this first generation that has five dominant alleles out of 100 total. Now remember, since there's 100 alleles total, it means there's 50 individuals in this population. And so this means that the dominant allele frequency is 0 0.05, or 5%. Let's also say that one of the dominant alleles is found in a heterozygous individual. And let's take a look at their cell. So looking at their cell, we're just going to focus on the gene that we're talking about. So we're going to look at one pair of chromosomes that code for that gene. And we have two different alleles here because they're heterozygous. So the red allele will represent the recessive, while the blue allele will represent the dominant. Okay, so let's say this cell undergoes meiosis to make gametes. Now, if you remember the steps of meiosis, the first thing it's going to do is replicate the chromosomes of this pair. So it's going to duplicate itself. And if you remember the end result of meiosis, we end up with four haploid cells. So each one of these cells is going to get a copy of this gene. So two of them will get a copy of the red allele, while two of them will get a copy of the blue allele. And these cells are going to act as gametes. So let's say this is a female and these are eggs. So one of these eggs are going to be fertilized by a sperm. So let's say just by chance the sperm fertilizes an egg that has a recessive allele, the red allele. So what does this mean for the population? Well, if we assume that every individual in the population had one offspring and that offspring was the same genotype as the parent, except for this one individual, then we're going to lose a dominant allele in the population. So we're going to end up with a second generation that has four dominant alleles out of 100. So we see this difference at about 1%. So instead of 50 individuals in the population, let's imagine we had 500 individuals in this population. So we have five dominant alleles out of 1,000 this time, meaning our allelic frequency is 0 0.005 or 0.5%. And then we had the same thing happen where the heterozygous ends up having one child that only got the recessive allele. So the next generation is going to have four dominant alleles again, but this time out of a thousand alleles. So we end up with an allele frequency of 0 .004. So if you remember the last one, we had a difference of 1%, while here we have a difference of 0.1%. So this is a good example to show you that the larger the population, the less that random chance can really affect the allelic frequencies. Okay, so let's look at a hypothetical graph of allele frequency over a generation. So let's say on the y-axis we have the frequency for the dominant allele, and on the x-axis we have generations. And let's say the allele that we're looking at started at about 0.5% in the population. And what you would expect is that even it might drift up and down between each generation just from random events, but overall it should stay around the 50% mark. But that might not always be the case. It could randomly start drifting one direction. So it might slowly drift where it's lost over time. Or the opposite could occur. It could drift until that allele goes to completion and there's no other alleles in the population. So that's where the term genetic drift comes from, because we could see the slow drift in allelic frequency over time just from random events. And the last thing we're going to look at is founder effect, which is a special case of genetic drift. So again, this is going to be a random change in a population's allele frequency. Founder's effect is when a subdivision of the population inhabits a new area and creates a new population. So this new population is probably not going to resemble the parent population. So let's take this example of a bunch of butterflies on an island. And let's say there's another island nearby that's too far for the butterflies to fly to, so it's uninhabited. And then one day a hurricane comes by and blows two of the butterflies over to the new island. Alright, so now these two butterflies will reproduce and populate this island. And this new population looks very different than the parent population. In the parent population, you can see the blue allele was more frequent, 
and in the new population you see that the yellow and green allele is more frequent. So again, this is a very special case of genetic drift called Founder's Effect. The color of the butterfly did not influence how they got to the new island, so which color made it to the island was completely random. So just to summarize everything we talked about, genetic drift is a random change in allele frequency, and this random change could happen at a very large scale and rapidly, like as in a natural disaster, or it could happen at a very small scale and gradually slide to a different allele frequency. We also saw that larger populations are less affected by genetic drift than smaller populations because the larger the population is, the more diluted the effect of genetic drift is. We saw that genetic drift can be slow, but it can still have a dramatic effect in the population over a long period of time. And finally, we talked about founder effect where a subdivision of the population inhabits a new location. So hopefully this video helped clarify what genetic drift is and made things a little easier for you to understand.